Good evening, everybody. Brian Newberg here from GoldenBlack.com. Live in the Target Center for the last time, courtside. Uh, I've been dumpster diving here for the last 10 minutes or so, looking for a discarded Purdue-Wisconsin box score. I cannot find one. Um, so I'm going to have to make up the stats, probably make up the final score, uh, and have nothing to write on while I do this video. So please bear with me. Uh, I believe it was 76 to 75 Wisconsin in overtime over Purdue. Uh, first off, thank you to the Purdue Club Hotel for your support. As always, we appreciate it. And uh, let us know when the Twin Cities location opens up. Um, and that's where I'll stay next time. So Purdue loses 76 to 75, as I mentioned earlier, in overtime. Um, I'd imagine there are quite a few people um, freaking out right now uh, because that's the nature of this season uh, for a lot of my readers, a lot of my viewers, listeners, whatever. Um, and I feel like I should do two different videos, one for the people who are happy Purdue lost today because they want more rest for the NCAA tournament for this team, and one for the people who are mad just be, or freaking out because they think this is predictive of things to come. It is not, I can tell you, with relative certainty. Nobody ever knows what's going to happen in the NCAA tournament. And that's why it kind of sucks that, you know, for Purdue, that they didn't win this thing when they were the best team in this thing. Um, is because when you have opportunities to win championships and you don't, it's unfulfilling. Now, obviously, Purdue's got the regular season title, which is a big deal, um, but it would have liked to have this one too. Uh, but if you're flipping out thinking this is something that is a sign of things to come, come next weekend, uh, I would run down the list of things that had to happen for this outcome to take place. One, and I don't know how to feel about listing this as something bizarre that happened today because it's happened three times prior to this. This season, all four Purdue losses were attributable to one thing and one thing only. Um, and you do have to give the opponents some credit for this, but if Purdue doesn't give up an average of 20 points off turnovers in its prior three losses and then commit 16 turnovers in this game, with no apparent causation to it, um, aside from Wisconsin doing a better job defensively uh, than it had in the prior two meetings with Purdue, mixing things up a little bit, applying a little more pressure on Purdue's guards. Um, this was not a sign of Purdue buckling because it's March. Uh, if that were the case, Purdue would not have played well enough to beat Michigan State yesterday. It would not have closed out the Big Ten regular season title the way it did. Um, there's no signs in this team whatsoever. In fact, somebody who went to the open locker room, I overheard them talking. They were surprised because they didn't think Purdue was phased one bit. And that's been the nature of this team all season long. Three times they lost at Northwestern, at Nebraska, at Ohio State. All three times completely unfazed. Yeah, we know how good we are, you know, and there's probably a fine line between confidence and maybe arrogance uh, in that sense, but this is not a team that's going to be affected mentally uh, by losses. I don't think it's a team that's going to be affected by the weight of the moment here come next week. Um, I think they're looking forward to it, actually. Um, but, no, just lo a locker room full of unfazed guys. Braden Smith's not happy, um, but th that's a little bit circumstantial given the way the game ended um, and he's probably annoyed at us for asking about his knee which just do my job but um, knee leg whatever it is um, but I, I don't think there's any real uh, cause for alarm here I think as I said earlier the turnovers have always been there uh, in terms of the thing that can get pretty beat at any point in time and Every time it's happened, Purdue's gone on like a six-game winning streak, seven-game winning streak, whatever it's been. Uh, so this team has bounced back from losses really, really well. And you know what happens now if you win six games in a row? Uh, I think you do. Not saying that's going to happen, um, but I'm, I am saying that I don't think Purdue is going to not show up next week. I don't think they're going to be phased by the moment because uh, that's just not in their body of work this season. It was last season to a certain extent. Um, 
but a lot of stuff had to happen here today for this one loss to occur in a vacuum. Uh, unprecedented foul trouble for Zach Eady, two fouls in one second. Uh, to his credit, he owned it. He said he's got to be better than that, not yap back at guys who were talking you know what to him. Um, which just seems to me like a bad idea. But nevertheless, uh, so there was, pardon me while I get comfortable here. Um, so there's the unprecedented foul trouble to Zach Eady. Uh, gets seven minutes at him in the first half. I thought Purdue had this game won at halftime because they had gotten through only having Zach Eady for seven minutes. They shoot one for eight from three. Wisconsin made a ton of tough shots. Um, and I just thought Purdue was going to take off from there because they had really, really hung in there in the first half. But then that's when the turnover stuff started. And uh, it's just something that, that's happened to this team here and there. I don't know why it clusters the way it does. Uh, I do think Wisconsin did some things defensively that um, made some things happen in their favor. Give them credit for that. Uh, that. That's kind of the luxury you have when you've played a team twice already, including six days ago. Um, not really something that people in single elimination NCAA tournament mode are going to have the advantage of, that sort of perspective. Um, but I don't know why the turnovers cluster on Purdue the way they do, but it's obviously something Purdue has needed to be wary of all season long and generally has every time they have to reset after a loss, they've done so convincingly. Um, but when you look at the other stuff that had to happen here uh, for Purdue to lose this game, in addition to the turnovers and the Zach Eady foul trouble, you had um, Wisconsin make a lot of tough shots, uh, shots they didn't make in the first two meetings uh, with Purdue, shots that really are not shots they typically make. Um, I think that uh, having to make two buzzer beaters, essentially the the other one came with a few seconds to go. But you know, obviously Chucky Hepburns was was a buzzer beater to force overtime, and then Max Klesmitz was with a couple seconds to go. So calling it a buzzer beater, I'm okay with it, but I might be taking a little bit more license than is appropriate with the term buzzer beater. It's kind of improbable stuff. Really hard in, for, on Purdue in those situations to. Um, guard those plays because you can't foul. Uh, but I was maybe a little surprised Painter was a little more proactive with the substituting there, getting Ethan Morton on the floor instead of Fletcher Lawyer, you know, things like that. Uh, the Zach Eady on the ball or at the rim thing is a question that I asked Painter about in the post game. His answer will answer your questions if you have any. Um, but no, Purdue just couldn't get a stop there in those two, those two uh, end of half sequences, and uh, that's obviously loom large in this. Uh, I don't know if Wisconsin's going to make those plays uh, seven times out of ten, but a couple more things that had to happen in Wisconsin's favor. Purdue missed some free throws, obviously that. That's part of Purdue's DNA. They're not the most consistent foul shooting team, even though their percentage is really good. Again, when you're as good as Purdue is, you get held to really high standards. So when you miss one free throw out of like six, but it comes at a bad time, it's kind of magnified. Um, but one more free throw here and there, you know, uh, changes the direction. I'm, what I'm trying to say here is just a lot of stuff had to happen for this one point overtime loss to occur, including the most improbably timed offensive foul on a push-off uh, I've probably seen. You, it's, you just don't see that call in that situation very often. Um, and uh, I don't think it was a bad call. Uh, Braden Smith seemed to feel like he was fouled a few times by Hepburn on the way up the floor. I'll go back and watch that later. I didn't see anything live, but um, it was a very physical game. And uh, he did kind of clear Hepburn out. It was a, I don't think it was a bad call, but it was an improbable play at a, at a weird time. Um, one more low percentage, rarely seen thing that kind of happened in this game to where everything had to fall in place for Wisconsin to basically steal this one. Um, but nothing that's going to uh, repeat itself here come next weekend, uh, in my opinion. Purdue's got to stay away from the turnovers. I mean, that's not new. Uh, they have to stay away from the turnovers. 
Um, it, it's been their vulnerability, their albatross. Uh, we've been giving a lot of love to the albatross lately. Um, the albatross, the Achilles heel, uh, the soft underbelly, if you will, of this Purdue team uh, in all of its losses. And, uh, you know, getting this team on really high alert heading into the NCAA tournament in that regard, uh, it should never have been off high alert. But, you know, sometimes things just happen, I guess. Um, might not be the worst thing in the world. Uh, that said, Purdue wanted to win this game. Purdue didn't want to take a loss to say, hey, we're going to the NCAA tournament mad or we're going to the NCAA tournament with an extra day of rest. You know, I, I don't think that's really all that big a thing. Um, but I think that uh, this was just one basketball game in a vacuum and not something that is the start of or a sign of things to come here in the next few weeks. I'm not even reading my mentions on Twitter I'm because I know exactly how this is going to go. Uh, I'm, I'm sure our, our, our message boards are lit right now, as the kids like to say, but it's one game. Uh, very, very elaborate set of circumstances unfolded for Purdue to lose by one point after 45 minutes of play. I don't think Zach Eady is going to pick up two fouls a minute and a half into an NCAA tournament game in the span of one second. Uh, that was amazing. Um, so that, that's what I got here from the Target Center. Just want to put all your minds at ease. I don't know what's going to happen in the NCAA tournament, but I would not want to be who this team plays in the first round. I will tell you that. I know that's not something that a one seed should be beating its chest over, but that's kind of Purdue's story here that it has to own and the sitting in it portion of that story is, you know, pretty much running its course now because they finally get a chance to put it to rest here in a, a couple of days, but obviously want to do much more than that and are very capable of doing much more than that. So uh, they really wanted to win this. They should have really wanted to win this, but, you know, um, they didn't. So, oh well, I guess. So that's what I got from the Target Center. That was um, trying to keep my voice down because the vacuums uh, the Illinois radio crew is here doing their post game show so if I seem a little bit weird it's because of that um, thank you for watching thank you for reading thank you for listening and thank you for processing our materials however it is you process our materials so from Purdue 67 no 76 to 75 um lost to Wisconsin in overtime here at the Target Center. This is Brian Newbert from GoldenBlack.com. Please like and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, if you don't know, we have a website at GoldenBlack.com. Uh, we're going to have lots of great coverage from the NCAA tournament here coming up. Mike Carmen's got some really good stuff in the works. I've got some really mediocre stuff probably in the works. Um, this would be a really good time to subscribe to our website. So go visit GoldenBlack.com. Um, and I don't think you'd be disappointed. As I always say, if, if you're degenerate enough to watch 13 and a half minutes of this, chances are you will like our website. So thanks, everybody.